Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 18.2 released to the public a few days ago, and there's even more to talk about since the iOS 18.2 is out what's new video. We'll talk about the overall experience, battery life, and not just my experience, but your experience based off the YouTube community poll, where at the time of this video, there's over 13,000 votes and 193 comments. I've gone over every single comment to determine what the experience is like for all of us, so be sure to stick around toward the end of the video where I go over a few of those. Now there's news this week as far as updates with Apple, and the first thing has to do with the Apple Store app. If we go into the Apple Store app, so I have it here, give it a second to load, and if we go into search and type let it snow, there's actually an Easter egg built in where it starts to snow on the display. It's a nice little thing they've hidden within the app, so you can try that out yourself if you have the App Store app. If we go into the App Store, and we type in iWork, Apple updated their iWork suite of apps this week with Pages, Numbers, and Keynote. Keynote is much better than PowerPoint, Numbers is okay compared to Excel, and Pages is decent unless you need advanced features. But they now all feature Apple Intelligence. So you'll see that you've now got those options here where you can proofread, rewrite, summarize, and more, and even use ChatGPT with it. But you will need a device that supports Apple Intelligence to use those specific features. Another thing Apple updated this week has to do with the Apple wallet. If we go into wallet and within the wallet, if we go to driver's license or state ID, Puerto Rico was added this week. So Apple has to work with your local state or government. Your state or government has to reach out and actually work with Apple to get this added. So we don't have that in a lot of states or countries yet. So far, just the United States and different territories. And hopefully we'll see this rolled out to more places. But let me know if you're using it already, if you would use it, if it's available in your state or country. I'd just like to know how this works for you since I don't have it currently where I live. Something else Apple's been working on is iPhone 17 Pro and the iPhone Air or iPhone 17 Air. We've now seen a leaked case or basically frame for the iPhone 17 Pro that basically changes the camera layout to more similar to what we have with maybe a Pixel 9 Pro, where we have sort of a bar at the top. If this is accurate, according to the information, they're actually saying this is what it looks like. So we could see something more similar to what the Pixel has compared to what we currently have with the iPhone. Let me know what you think of that design in the comments below, but we'll talk more about this in the weekly news update as we normally do, typically on Mondays or so. Now, Apple's been promising a next generation version of Apple CarPlay for a couple years now. It looks like they're going to miss their deadline again for 2024, as their website says first models arrive in 2024. We originally heard that it would be coming to a lot of different models and then Porsche and Aston Martin said that they would have it. And so far we haven't seen it. Even in their latest Porsche Macan electric, they actually switched over to Android automotive. So maybe they changed their mind, but at this point, maybe with the cancellation of Apple's car, maybe they're pushing this out even further, but I would like to see some sort of change, at least in the regular car play as well. But let me know what you think of that in the comments below. Now the AirPods Pro 2 hearing test and hearing aid features are great. Unfortunately, they're not available everywhere. However, Health Canada just approved it. So this is something that's going to be coming out in maybe the next couple months for health in Canada, and you can actually have hearing protection and hearing assistance with taking a hearing test and then using them as official hearing aids. So that's something we could see in the next couple months in Canada and hopefully other countries as well as they get approved. Now, as far as new features this week, well, there's a couple things to note as far as iOS 18.2. If we go into podcasts and then maybe we go to a show and within the show notes themselves, so maybe you go into the show, you want to know more about it, we'll go in. The notes are no longer cut off. You can actually read all of the different notes and just scroll through them. So it's a nice little update just to make it more legible. Music also has a feature I've talked about before, but was released publicly this week. If we go into maybe an album that has multiple discs, and if we search for a multi-disc set, you can see a few options here, but if we go into one, you'll see that they're now labeled with the different discs. If you actually had the purchased set, these were the songs included on those specific disc numbers. So disc one, disc two, and disc three, disc four, and you'll see that here. So if you have maybe a boxed set that you used to listen to that's now available in Apple Music, you'll actually see that labeled. 
It also seems that visual intelligence has been confirmed only for iPhone 16 models. For some reason, just because we don't have a camera control button, we can't use it on the iPhone 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max. This really makes no sense whatsoever as it's not very intensive and they should just give us a shortcut for that. So hopefully we'll be able to assign it eventually maybe to the action button on the side or something else. But I really think this is a poor decision on Apple's part where they should add it to this device as well. I don't see why they couldn't and hopefully they add that in the future. I wanted to ask also, what's your favorite feature of iOS 18? Not just Apple intelligence. While we had a bunch of Apple intelligence features I've covered extensively, there's quite a few updates with that disc number update, podcasts, the new mail update. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below what your favorite feature is. Now, moving on to the next betas, there's a few releases we're waiting for. In fact, iOS 19 is already in the works and may be causing a slowdown for all the other updates. It seems that a lot of work has gone into Apple intelligence and it may be slowing things down going into the next set of updates. I would be okay with Apple slowing down and maybe having a snow leopard year where they really focus on bugs and just add maybe a few features and changes here and there. And I think that would benefit a lot of us. So hopefully we'll see something like that. But either way, Apple could release an iOS 18.2.1 if they find any major bugs in this particular update. And since we're in December, I don't expect too many more updates, but I do expect some sort of release. Most likely, instead of iOS 18.2.1, we could have iOS 18.3 Beta 1. In fact, Apple kind of leaked this today with watchOS 11.3, where they actually updated the notes page, but never released the update. So if we go to Apple's public facing release notes, and if we scroll down, you'll see watchOS 11.2. If we go to view the release notes, and then maybe rotate here, we'll go into our documentation. You'll see we have watchOS 11.3 beta release notes, but there's nothing in them. So if we scroll down, it basically says there are no new release notes for this software update. And if you check for them, there's nothing there. So if we go to general and then software update, even if you have the developer options enabled, you still won't see it. So we'll probably see this as soon as Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, and that will probably be the last beta we have until the mid of January or middle of January. Usually the second or third week of January, we get beta two. Apple's on vacation, usually for Christmas and New Year's and the holidays, and typically for that, we get time off, and so they take time off as well, and we don't see an update until later on. So that's what I'm expecting this year as well. So we could see one more beta update with some additional Apple intelligence features. We don't know specifically what it will have, whether it will have some sort of early version of Siri 2.0 or something else, but we're waiting to see what they'll have with that overall. Now, remember, if you no longer want to receive beta updates, go into your settings, then go to your software updates, and make sure you turn this off turn off your beta updates and you'll be on the latest version. As long as you updated, once this is off, you'll actually have the latest version and you'll just stay on that until the next public version releases. When it comes to the iOS 17.7.2 experience, it's been out for a few weeks and most people say it's super stable and very good. Overall, I think it's a great update for those that want to stay on iOS 17. However, we did not get an iOS 17.7.3 even though we got an iPad OS 17.7.3. So hopefully Apple updates that, adds some security updates and just patches it because at this point there's no offering for that. But I would like to see that concurrent offering with iOS 18 as well. With iOS 18.2's overall experience, this is a pretty super update in the sense that it seems to be very stable and they've actually done it in fixing many of the bugs this time around before the holiday break iOS 18.2 generally is a pretty good experience for most. It'll take a few days up to a week for it to stabilize, complete working in the background, and in general, it may just be utilizing some of that information and slowing things down a little bit for some, but overall it's very solid. But after a few days, it seems to speed right up and fix battery life. So stuttering has been fixed. If it hasn't, you need to reboot, but stuttering overall seems to be pretty good. If we go into maybe mail, scroll home, you'll see there was no stuttering there. Go into weather, wait for it to load, again swipe home. It's nice and fast, even on the iPhone 11. We'll talk about performance a little bit later, but touch bugs seem to be gone now, even if you have a screen protector. Placing apps and folders seems to be fixed, so if we want to maybe move the podcast app here, place it in a folder. It's not much of an issue there anymore. It seems like they've fixed all the touch issues we were having and stickers are now showing properly. Apple specifically mentioned they fixed this. So if we go into messages within messages, if you go to your 
sticker option or emoji keyboard and then into your stickers. They're no longer blank in the middle. They've fixed this. There was a specific fix for this, but it looks like it's resolved entirely now. Also, mail notifications work properly if you configure them. Once you've installed the new update, you may need to go into your notification settings and adjust those specifically for mail. If you don't do that, some people are having issues with it. However, if you adjust your mail notifications, it seems to resolve that issue for most. So if we go into mail here, make sure that you have this set up for immediate delivery if you want that and change the banner style or whatever you'd prefer, but make sure that's set up properly and not just going into your summary. Otherwise you won't see those. Now this update does have a few new bugs. A few people have said the keyboard is very slow. Thankfully, I haven't experienced this myself, but some have. So if we go into notes on the iPhone 11, you'll see here, if I say, hi, this is Aaron from Zolo tech. It seems to be keeping up just fine. I personally have not experienced this bug, but I've seen enough of you mention it that it seems to be an issue. The other thing I've heard of is mail delays with them coming in again, make sure your settings are set up so that it's set to push or it's set to maybe check every 15 minutes. If it's set to only check once you open the mail out app, that's actually going to slow it down. So go into mail here, make sure you haven't adjusted it for battery, go into mail, and under mail, you'll see here where we can go in and we can actually have it check. Let's find it here. It's under accounts. Then we'll go under an individual account, or you can select it here with fetch new data. You can change it to push or fetch and have it check every so often or automatically. So I would suggest setting this up properly, make sure it's correct, and then see if you're still having an issue. Thankfully, it seems to be fixed for me for the most part. The one issue I have seen myself is lower volume with AirPods. I was listening to music and then YouTube, and all of a sudden I couldn't adjust the volume up. I actually had to put them back in the case then put them back in my ears, reconnect, and it fixed the problem. So it's definitely a little bug there, but the major bugs are fixed. Some people still say they have slow face ID. I haven't seen any issue myself. Again, it unlocks right away. If I just pick up the phone and swipe up, it unlocks right away. I know a few people have mentioned it, but most people seem to say it's fixed. If we go into our wallpaper, if we scroll down, it looks like Apple has decided to remove the iPhone 15 pro wallpaper. I'm not sure if this is a mistake or a bug, but it's not there. Sometimes it's there with some of the betas and then it went away again and they've since removed it with the public release. I'm not sure why, but it's definitely something we've seen. When it comes to wallpaper, some people are seeing it still saturate a little bit more on the home screen compared to the lock screen. Personally, I would like to see that the same on both displays, but at least it's not dimming or sort of desaturating on the home screen anymore. One other odd thing though, is if we go into our accessibility settings, so if we go into go back all the way to accessibility and within accessibility, if we scroll down, you'll see the camera control icon still has not been updated with the dark mode icon. This is probably just an oversight. I don't think it's purposeful, but at least it's not broken. It's just not updated to match everything else. So maybe they're just busy again, working on iOS 18.3 and iOS 19. When it comes to battery, there's no sign of battery intelligence yet. This is something that some people were calling battery intelligence, but was simply just something in the code that may tell us how much time there is left to finish charging your battery. We've seen this on other phones for years. We've seen it on Mac for years. For some reason, it's not here on the iPhone and hopefully it will be in the future. When it comes to battery life itself, well, first let's take a look at someone else's. This is on an iPhone 15 pro. And thanks to Matthew for sending this in, you'll see the maximum capacity is 91%. And when it comes to battery life itself, four hours and 55 minutes of screen active time, four hours and 22 minutes of screen idle time. And that was 100% of his battery. If we take a look at today, it was one hour and 18 minutes of screen active time and probably 15% of the battery. So overall it's improving. It takes a few days to do that. And you should see the same if you just give it a few days or so to finish processing in the background. If we go into my settings, go to battery, battery health, you'll see I have 75 cycles with 100% capacity still, and you can see additional details with coconut battery, a Mac app here on the left. And then also if we take a look at my battery life, it is getting me through the day. It seems to be getting better. And today so far I've had six hours and two minutes of screen active time at two hours and 18 minutes of screen idle time. Yesterday I only had four hours and 29 minutes. So you'll see the improvement there. And I did charge it just a little bit 44 minutes ago as I was using this a lot on different social media 
media app. So it does seem to be improving quite a bit since it released. So I think that's a great sign and it will continue to get better. And most people are saying it's the best ever when it comes to performance. Well, it's the best ever. Like I mentioned before, it seems to be very great. It's a super update where things are super smooth, except for a few lags here and there that I've mentioned before. Most people experience great performance. You'll see ProMotion is nice and smooth. It ramps up and down as needed, no problem. And going into different apps, maybe we go into the camera quick. Let's go back here. We'll open up the camera, snap a photo quickly. You'll see it's nice and fast. So it's what you would expect opening up different apps, whether it's music, or the camera, your phone calls and everything else. When it comes to the overall heat of the device, it's staying nice and cool. Using Apple intelligence will heat it up a little bit. That's pretty typical as it's using a lot of power with the neural engine, but it seems to be staying nice and cool compared to what we had before. Let's take a look with the thermal camera. So with iOS 18.2 on the 16 pro max, we're at about 32 to 32.5 degrees Celsius on the one that's been sitting idle again with iOS 18.2 on a 15 pro max, we're at 27 point four degrees Celsius is the highest I've seen. So overall pretty good. It's staying nice and cool in general. Again, if you're running Apple intelligence, it will heat up quite a bit, but it's nothing out of the ordinary from what I've seen so far. When it comes to the benchmarks, let's take a closer look as this is some of the best yet. And we've actually seen that last week where it was the best we'd ever had. It's even better than that this week for the most part on all of these, we have iOS 18.2 public release. And from left to right, we have the iPhone 15 pro max iPhone 11, and then iPhone 16 Pro Max. These scores are the highest I've seen yet when it comes to multi-core. And you'll see, I did run it a couple times just to see what we'd get, but I have 8,837 for multi-core. I've never seen that score before on the iPhone 16 Pro Max. Single core is 3,535. So that's well within what we've seen before but that's definitely better than I've ever seen. So pretty great scores. Again, it's even better than last time. When it comes to your overall comments and what you had to say about the experience, let's take a look at some of those. Andy 3407 said, I'm liking is so far. Battery life has drastically increased and the iPhone 12 Pro does not get hot on the charger. Mail was odd until I found the setting to put emails in multiple bins. Still have problems that mail doesn't, doesn't update when not running. So I end up with a bunch of email on my phone. I use pop three as my email download and only do it when I'm away from the office. I have the mail set to only download when I request WW Osiris said an outstanding experience, both on my 11 pro max and my 15 pro max, even though I found that image playground is very demanding on my battery. I also have iPad OS 18.2 and really nothing to complain about. My wife also has it installed on her 12 pro max. And besides the new mail app refresh, she finds nothing really new in it. Hayden Meaty says, I'm on iOS 18.2 on my iPhone 14 pro max, no issues to report. It's been running smoothly and battery life has been good for me so far. Dodd Solomon 4971 said performance improved on my 13 pro max, no more stuttering and home screen navigation and app library scrolling. Joseph Christensen said currently on iOS 18.2 on my iPhone 12 pro max. So far, it seems to be performing a lot better than it did on 18.1.1. Definitely noticing less bugs and glitches. I unfortunately can't comment on battery performance as my battery health capacity is at 78% and therefore I'm not seeing accurate numbers when it comes to battery use. A new Janand 2634, hopefully I'm saying that properly, running iOS 18.2 on my iPhone 15 Pro Max. Battery for me has noticeably improved with 18.2 and scrolling through the UI is more polished and lag free. However, AI features and UI while using the AI features still feels a bit unrefined. Blind Gordy said, I'm on iOS 18.2 on my iPhone 15 Pro. Battery life is not as good as it usually is, but that's to be expected with a new update. So far, everything else is fine and dandy, and I especially love the new feature in the music app, where you could listen to an album with multiple discs, one disc at a time. It's working well with CarPlay for me as well. No issues with connectivity. The only thing I have is where there's sort of a spot where I don't have great cell reception. Occasionally a song will sort of pause until it can get that data again while I'm using CarPlay. But overall, the experience has been much better than what I've seen before, but hopefully iOS 18.3 brings additional features we weren't expecting. And so that's everything with iOS 18.2. It seems to be a really great update and what iOS 18 should have been from the start. I'd love to hear from you as far as your overall experience, how it's going for you, what battery life is like and more. And of course, if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. 
If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.